Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we are going to be exploring another axial deformation example. So let's go ahead and get started. In our given information, we are given a system that I'm going to scroll down and show you in just a second, but we're being asked to determine if a point A will come into contact with the motor directly beneath it. And then we're told that all cables have the same cross-section area of 0.025 square inches and have a Young's modulus of 29,000 KSI. And then we're also being told to assume the horizontal members are infinitely rigid compared to the cables. So let's scroll down and take a look at this kind of complicated looking system that we're given. And you might want to pause the video and uh, sketch this up after I finish describing what we're looking at. So what we have here is two horizontal members, maybe they're beams, for example. We have one of them DEF here, and that's kind of got a dark green color, and another one ABC that has another dark green color. And that last sentence of the problem statement said that they're assumed to be very rigid or infinitely rigid compared to the three cables that we see here. We have three cables, D, G, F, H, and A, E. And what that last sentence really means is that in terms of deformations, we're only concerned about the axial deformation, or in this case, specifically the axial elongations of these three cables. We are not uh, concerned with the deflection or the bending capacity or bending abilities of these two beams. So we're not going to be dealing with the beams wanting to bend. We're only dealing with deformations coming from the elongations of these three cables. So that's what that last sentence uh, means. Now, um, so we have this cable system and it's supporting an 800 pound point load at this point B. Um, at point C, we have an external pin connection connected to the end of that of that horizontal member ABC. Now let's talk about our dimension lines. This horizontal member ABC is four feet long in total. The distance from A to B is given by this three foot dimension line and the distance from B to C is given by this one foot dimension line. Up here, the horizontal member DEF is three feet long in total. The distance from D to E is measured by this one foot dimension line over here. And then the, the distance from E to F is measured by this two foot horizontal dimension line. In the vertical direction, cable AE is two and a half feet long, and then cables DG and FH are both three feet long. This three foot dimension line uh, is associated with those two vertical cables. Now we have this um, little uh, weird diagram here of a motor and this motor is located two inches two inches below this point A. So our problem statement is asking us, whenever this cable system is supporting this 800 pound load, is this 800 pound load going to eventually cause these three cables to elongate to the point in which point A comes into contact with this motor. Is point A going to deform vertically downwards and run into this motor due to the elongations of these three vertical cables, which uh, together the system is supporting this 800 pound load. So this is a problem that at first glance seems a little intimidating, but if we tackle it systematically step by step, we'll find that it's not as overwhelming as it initially looks. So let's Let's go ahead and get started with our solution. So I'm going to go to the next page here and I'm going to write solution. And again, maybe pause and rewind the video throughout this example because this example is a bit long and you might want to pause and write some sketches down, sketch some things down uh, as we're moving through. You definitely want to write everything down because this is, a, like I said, it's kind of a long-winded example. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to compute cable forces. Okay, that's our first step we're going to do. And this is really a statics process. Okay, this is just going to be from our knowledge of statics. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram. I'm going to call this free body diagram one. And this free body diagram is going to be of the bottom beam. Okay, that bottom beam 
uh, that has that 800 pounds hanging from it. So um, instead of writing 800 pounds, I'm gonna write 0.8 kips. And um, we have here that show up an, a, a single vertical axial force, FAE. You write that a little nicer, FAE. And then at the opposite side, C, of course, we have a CY and a CX. And then we need to be proper and draw our dimension lines on our free body diagram um, as three feet and one foot. Now here, um, we actually don't need to calculate CX and CY. We can if we want to, but really we just need FAE. So in order to get that, I'm gonna say sum of the moments about point C equals zero, taking counterclockwise positive. I'm gonna say negative FAE times four feet plus 0.8 kips times one foot equals zero. And I can get that FAE is equal to 0.2 kips. It's a positive quantity, so that cable is gonna be in tension here, okay? So again, that's just a static step. Next, I'm gonna move to a second free body diagram, which I'm gonna call FBD number two. And on FBD two, I'm gonna look at that upper horizontal member, that upper beam. So when we analyze that upper beam, we have a point D here that is supporting that cable force FDG. And then on the opposite side, we have point F that is supporting the cable force uh, FFH. Now remember, cable AE is attached to this beam, okay? So cable AE is gonna be attached here and we're gonna see that FAE force that we just calculated show up in this free body diagram, and that's the 0.2 kips. And from earlier, we knew it was in tension, which means it's actually pointing away from the point of contact on both free body diagrams. And so to be proper, we're gonna draw our dimension lines of uh, this part of the system, and that's gonna be one foot and two feet here. Now again, maybe pause the video, rewind, make sure you're looking at the diagrams properly and you're tracking where these values are coming from. So now we need to calculate both FDG and FFH, and we're gonna apply two equilibrium equations to do that. I'm gonna start with some of the moments about point F equals zero, taking things going counterclockwise positive. I'm gonna say negative FDG times three feet plus that 0.2 kips times two feet equals zero. And I'm gonna get FDG is equal to 0.1333 kips. That's a positive quantity, so that's also in tension. And then I'm gonna say sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, taking things pointing up as positive. So that'll be 0.1333 kips minus 0.2 kips plus FFH equals zero. Doing some rearranging, I'm gonna get FFH equals 0.06667 kips, also positive, which means it's also in tension. So these are all of my cable forces. I'm gonna scroll back up just for a second and show you, remind ourselves that those are our three cable forces. Um, I like to put some check marks by my cable forces once I've figured them out. Again, I did not solve for CX and CY at this pin connection in free body diagram one, but I could have. Um, I just don't need to because um, I'm interested in uh, eventually the elongations of these three cables. So now that we have uh, completed our statics steps, and again, so far what we've done is actually not mech of materials, it's just statics. Now that we've computed, completed our statics steps, now we're gonna get to the mech of materials part of this problem, which is to compute the cable deformations, okay? Compute the cable deformations. This is our mechanics of materials processes here, okay? So I'm gonna um, first start with what I did in free body diagram two, okay? So I'm gonna say from 
free body diagram two, I'm gonna take what I just calculated and I'm gonna start by computing the axial deformation of cable DG. And that's gonna be computed from F DG times the length of DG divided by the cross section area times the modulus of elasticity. So that's our friendly FL over AE formula. And we were told at the beginning in the problem statement a was 0.025 inches squared and E is 29,000 KSI for all the cables. So I can substitute my values in and get delta DG is equal to 0.1333 kips times 36 inches. Now the length of DG was given as three feet, but that's just 36 inches divided by 0.025 inches squared times 29,000 KSI, and when I punch this through, I'm gonna get a value equal to 0 0.006619 inches, okay? So that's axial deformation, and that's specifically an elongation because that force DG is a tensile force, so that cable is gonna be elongating. So from the same free body diagram too, I can calculate the axial deformation of uh, cable FH, so that's gonna be delta FH, and that's gonna be equal to FFH times the length of FH over AE. And substituting values in, I'm gonna get delta FH equals 0 0.06667 kips times 36 inches over 0 0.025 square inches times 29,000 KSI. When I punch all these values in, I should get 0 0.003311 inches. Now what I'm going to draw um, to, to help us visualize this better is a deformation diagram of this part of the system. Okay, So just to keep with my labeling, I'm going to call uh, this deformation diagram two because it's the deformation diagram that is going along with free body diagram two. So I'm gonna draw that beam, okay? And um, that had points D and F at its two different spots. And then of course we had a point E about right here. And um, what what's happening here, oh, and don't forget our dimension lines. That's important. So um, we had one foot and uh, I believe that was two feet here. So um, what's happening is due to the two cables that were attached at D and then the other one at F, both of those cables have elongated by these amounts that we just calculated. So what we're gonna draw is um, how this beam has basically shifted downwards um, and it's got a little tilt to it due to the elongations of the two cables. One was attached at D and one was attached at F. So you think about it, maybe pause the video. What would this look like? Well, I'm gonna tell you the answer now. So point D has shifted down to a new point, let's call it D prime, and point F has shifted down to a new point, let's call it F prime, okay? Now the amount that point D has shifted downwards is equal to what? Well, it's equal to delta DG, the elongation of the cable that was attached at D. So this value right here is the 0 0.006619 inches. And then on the right side here, point F has shifted downwards by an amount equal to 0 0.003311 inches. And so this whole beam has now shifted down, but its two points have shifted down by different amounts. So now not only has the beam itself shifted downwards, but it's also at this, at this slope. It's kind of got a tilt to it, okay? So just try to imagine that. And so that means that point E has shifted down to a new point E prime. So here's the question then, how do we calculate 
this amount that E has shifted down, that's going to be delta, and we can call that E prime here, give it a name, delta E prime. How do we calculate that? And why do we want it? Well, we want that vertical deformation at point E because that's where this beam is connected to the beam below it, right? So that's that's the point of contact that's connecting these two horizontal members together. So we need to know how much point E has shifted downwards. Well, um, because we're assuming these beams are very rigid and they are not bending, um, they're very rigid compared to the cables, we can establish a linear relationship here uh, between these deformations. So we can say that the deformation of E prime is equal to 0.006619 inches minus this quantity, this is going to be a fraction here, 0 0.006619 inches minus 0 0.003311 inches, all divided by 36 inches times 12 inches. Now you may be thinking to yourself, wait a second, Dr. A, where is this mumbo jumbo coming from? Well, let me explain it very quickly and then maybe pause the video and you make sure you can figure it out. So we're assuming this is a linear relationship right now, which is a fair assumption since the beam is infinitely rigid compared to these cables. The beam is not going to bend if it's infinitely rigid compared to the cables. So um, what I've done here is I got the slope of this line. So when you get the slope of a line, that's this right here. This is the slope of this deformation diagram. So I said literally, um, I just used basic knowledge of algebra one, rise over run or, you know, delta y over delta x is what we said back in algebra one. So I said 0 0.006619, which is this distance, minus 0 0.003311 divided by the horizontal length um, on, on that uh, beam. So that gave me the slope of that line. Then I multiplied it by 12 inches. Well, where does that come from? That's this one foot right here. That's this 12 foot dimension. So this quantity, this quantity right here um, that I just boxed in actually represents the uh, this little distance right here, this little distance that I'm dashing in. It's a vertical distance here. And then I took this 0 0.006619 distance, and I subtracted that little uh, that little distance that I just talked about, and that gave me this delta E prime. Now, this is not the only way you can calculate this. You can establish a linear relationship in a few other ways using other concepts of direct proportionality to get delta E prime. This is just the way I did it. So this step right here is really just an algebra one step. Uh, in disguise. So again, pause the video, make sure not only you understand what I did, but if you have a different way of getting it, uh, do it your way um, as long as it's using linear relationships or direct proportionality. So when you punch this through, um, you should get a value equal to 0 0.00. 5516 inches. Okay, so um, now we're done with deformation diagram two, which is uh, utilizing free body diagram two. Now we're going to go to free body diagram one. Okay, so I'm going to say from free body diagram number one, we need to perform some calculations. I'm going to calculate the uh, elongation or, or the deformation of point A using the cable it's attached to, which is AE. So that's going to be FAE times LAE divided by module, uh, cross section area times modulus of elasticity. So this is going to be 0 0.2 kips times 30 inches. The 30 inches is the two and a half feet in the original diagram all divided by 0 0.025 square inches times 29,000 KSI. So when I punch this through, I get the elongation of point A, or the deformation of point A is 0 0.008276 inches. Now, this is the elongation or, or the deformation of point A only due to the force in uh, cable AE. But what you gotta remember is the, the deformation or, or how much point A is deforming 
is not only due to the amount of stretch in cable AE, but it's also due to all of the deformations that occurred before or above that, which as you just know, as you know from our previous calculations, point A is connected to point E through cable AE. So because point E has deformed by this amount that we just calculated, 0.005516, and cable AE is stretching by an amount 0.008276, the total, the total deformation of point A, which we can call that delta AT for total, is actually gonna be equal to delta E prime plus delta A. So we actually have to add these two quantities together. Again, point A is moving down vertically due to uh, everything that has moved down vertically that it's attached to from above. So when we add these two together, we actually get a value equaling 0 0.01379 inches. So this is part of our answer. The, the total vertical deformation um, or, or movement of point A is 0 0.01379 inches downwards. Now, the final answer to our question that was posed is, is this going to bump into that motor that is directly beneath it? So the answer is no. We're going to say point A does not come into contact with the motor since the motor is two inches below point A. Okay, now again, this was a long problem. It had a lot of steps. Um, you Hopefully you wrote everything down. Please rewind, pause, and really think about this problem. This is a, a challenging problem in mechanics of materials. So if this video was helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe.